people love to explore both our planet and everything beyond it. In fact, if it wasn't for our aspirations, science and technology would never have developed as much as they have. Even evolution could have taken a different path. And who knows, maybe we would have never discovered minerals if we didn't simply love that hobby of ours, digging. I agree, it sounds quite unpoetic. But it's through digging that we've made so many discoveries. Most often, people dig into the Earth somewhere near civilization. But what if we plunged into the depths of the Antarctic ice? And not just drill a big hole, but also throw something down it. What for, you ask? For the sake of science, of course. There are many boreholes on our planet. They are drilled at different angles and for different purposes. The extraction of gas, oil or water, the search for minerals, temperature measurements, geotechnical studies. In addition to conventional boreholes, there are also super deep ones. Surely, you've heard about the Kola Super Deep Borehole, listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the deepest man-made hole in the Earth's crust. At 12,261 meters, or 40,226 feet deep, it's serious. Bertha Rogers, a slightly shallower American borehole, reaches a depth of 9,583 meters, that's 31,441 feet. And the German KTB borehole has reached 9,101 meters. That's 29,859 feet. Most of the super deep boreholes around the world were created with the aim of searching for and extracting minerals, while at the same time exploring the underground depths. Unfortunately, or fortunately, while drilling, scientists weren't up for much fun and certainly not any funny experiments, which is a pity. How could they even resist the temptation of throwing a small stone into the deepest hole in the world? Anyway, we're going to leave the super deep boreholes in the northern hemisphere alone and move to the south, far to the south, where frost and severe winds reign. Welcome to Antarctica. On average, Antarctica is considered the coldest and windiest continent. Most of it is an icy desert. The Antarctic ice sheet covers about 98% of the entire continent and is the largest accumulation of ice on the Earth. In fact, it's a giant freezer containing about 61% of all fresh water on the planet. Scientists believe that the glaciation of Antarctica began about 45,500,000 years ago. It's believed that the cause was the emergence of the Drake Passage and, as a result, a decrease in the amount of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. So, how did scientists figure this out? Among other things, their studies of this massive ice sheet helped. There's even a separate science called glaciology that deals with natural ice in all of its varieties in the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and lithosphere. That is, even ice in the backyard, theoretically, could interest glaciologists. But expeditions to Antarctica bring much more benefit to them. This is exactly what the glaciologist from the USA, Peter Neff, did. In 2018, together with two other scientists, he did his best to study ice in western Antarctica. To obtain suitable samples, they drilled a borehole 90 meters or 295 feet deep. Why so deep? Samples of ice taken from such depths provide data on the climate as it was hundreds of thousands of years ago. All of this information is preserved in the chemical composition of its water and in air bubbles. With sections of ice, as it is with the annual rings of trees, you can retrieve highly valuable information about our planet's past. But Peter decided to take it a bit further. Not just take the necessary samples, but also have some fun. He threw a piece of ice into the borehole and filmed the entire process. Sure, you can't call his video very dynamic, but listen to that sound. At first, the impact of ice on ice sounds exactly as you might expect. But then, wait, was that a bullet whizzing through the air? 
Nope, that wasn't the work of Antarctic cowboys behind the scenes. The Doppler effect is to blame. The so-called change in the frequency and wavelength of radiation depending on the movement of the source or observer. In other words, the ice falling downward moves away from the camera, and the sound it makes while bouncing off the walls gradually changes. To reach us, it needs more and more time. A similar effect can be observed in ordinary life. For example, when an ambulance with its siren on passes by. When it hits the bottom of the borehole, the ice block still makes a sound. However, sound waves don't move vertically in a straight line, as one might imagine. They also reflect off the walls of the hole. When they reach the top, you hear a sound similar to a heartbeat. The Doppler effect is also responsible for this. I think it's good that Peter Neff is a professional scientist, but one could imagine that somewhere there, under the thickness of the ice, a huge monster is hiding, who apparently gets quite agitated when someone drops something on him. Now, if you think about it, 90 meters or 295 feet isn't such a great depth, especially when compared with the boreholes that I spoke about at the beginning of the video. So, what if we go deeper? Thanks to geochemist John Andrew Higgins of Princeton Environmental Institute, we can find out what would happen if we repeated Neff's experience in a 137 meter or 449 foot borehole. Just imagine, you're a serious scientist who's been in Antarctica for multiple days. It's extremely cold and you're on a very important job. How could you resist the temptation of throwing something into such a deep hole? I certainly couldn't. If Neff managed to recreate the whistle of a bullet, then at an even greater depth, it must sound like… Lasers? But seriously, it sounds as if there's a squad of stormtroopers from Star Wars sitting at the bottom of the borehole, shooting at everything that moves. These boreholes are far from the only ones created in Antarctica, and certainly not the deepest ones. In 2019, a team of scientists drilled the deepest borehole in Western Antarctica. It took them almost three days to work through 2,152 meters, that's 7,060 feet of ice. The team took sediment samples for analysis and also measured how the ice temperature and water pressure at these depths changed. But did anyone throw anything into the hole? I doubt it. But what if they did? According to my calculations, a stone or piece of ice would take about 21 seconds to reach the bottom. That is, you'll have to wait a long time, and most likely, some of the noises you hear will still sound like a shootout, or a very piercing whistle. In this case, a stone or piece of ice will travel through the borehole at a speed of approximately 745 kilometers or 463 miles an hour. This, by the way, is practically the speed of an airplane. After it hits the bottom, another 6.27 seconds will pass before we hear it. But the depth of this borehole still isn't a world record. Despite the harsh weather conditions, humans have stubbornly dug further into the depths of the coldest continent on Earth. Have you heard of Lake Vostok? It's the largest subglacial lake in Antarctica, located at the South Pole, in the region of the Russian Antarctic Vostok Station. Scientists reached it for the first time in 2012 by drilling to a depth of 3,768 meters. That's 12,362 feet. Despite the immense thickness of ice above it, the water in the lake turned out to be liquid and quite warm by the standards of Antarctica, of course. It was plus 10 degrees Celsius, or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The lake doesn't freeze due to the high ice pressure, and the heat of the planet itself at the same time may well heat it from underneath. It's assumed that this Antarctic pond was hidden under the ice sheet 15 million years ago, and since then, its inhabitants have evolved on their own. So. 
What will happen if we throw a piece of ice or a stone into the borehole above Lake Vostok? Will it be possible to hear a quiet splash after a few seconds? Unfortunately, calculating this is quite difficult. When scientists reach the surface of the lake, they let the water rise up into the hole and freeze. But not because they wanted to do all of their work over again. It's this freshly frozen water that then goes to scientific laboratories for analysis. In fact, special fluids were constantly used during drilling, which prevented freezing. So, if we tried dropping something into Lake Vostok today, we would most likely find that the borehole had simply frozen over. Unfortunately, there would be no way to reach it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And click on the bell to receive notifications of new, interesting videos that are waiting for you ahead.